Going into the World Cup, no one expected the group stage's star player to be an Ecuadorian winger, but the thing is, Ener Valencia is no average player. He spent his entire career just a little bit short of making it into the spotlight. His story is unbelievable. As his uncle once said, we all knew he'd become a footballer because footballers aren't made, they are simply born. His mom even insists that inside her belly, it was the one child to kick the hardest. And indeed, it seems that he was always determined to do anything for football. Even if he didn't have a ball, even if there was no one to play with, even if it was raining, the fire inside him could never be put out. He would just skip school and spend his day practicing his skills with an empty water bottle if that was the only way he could practice. In fact, he never even owned a real ball the most his parents ever managed to give him was one made out of rags. Actually, Ener didn't join a team until he was 16 years old. Before that, he spent his days helping his father in a farm. Every day he would milk the cows, go downtown and sell the milk. Regardless, at 19 a big opportunity arrived. Ener went on trial at Emelec, one of the biggest clubs in Ecuador, and they ended up signing him, even providing him with housing once he admitted that he could not afford to rent a place for himself. But still, things weren't easy, it's not like he was being treated like a wonder kid, for two years he didn't get a single chance to play for the main team. Regardless, through sheer persistence, at the age of 20 he made his debut, but still, he was being played out of position much deeper than he would like to and rarely getting more than 30 minutes per match. It honestly looked like Valencia could have ended up at some mid-table team in Ecuador, but it was at that moment that he turned it all around, forcing his way into a more attacking role, earning a place as a first-team player and getting called up for the national team for the first time. But still, he wasn't done. In 2013, despite his unimpressive goal-scoring numbers, Ener Valencia became one of MLX's key players, constantly drawing comparisons to some of Ecuador's all-time greats, topping the goal-scoring charts at the Copa Sudamericana and leading his team towards the league title after three years of dominance by their rivals, Barcelona. When normally, at this point, the player would try to seize the moment and take whatever move to Europe he could get, Valencia ended up instead signing with Pachuca in Mexico for 3 million euros and yes, that is as much of a bargain as it seems. At Pachuca, Valencia finally morphed into the kind of player he is known as today, scoring 18 goals in just half a season, six of which in the six playoff matches he got to play, finishing as the league's top scorer but still losing out in the final despite his amazing performance. Throughout this period, he quickly became Ecuador's star player, going on a run of 11 goals in 11 games for them, spanning over almost a full year where he only failed to score on two occasions. But you know what was special about this period? The World Cup fell right in the middle of it. As Valencia said himself, I never thought I would play in a World Cup, so when I got there out of nowhere, I tried to make the most of every minute, and he really did. He opened the tournament with a goal against Switzerland, then scored two against Honduras to earn Ecuador their first win in a World Cup since 2006, and then they pulled off a goalless draw against France totaling four points, the same four points that were enough to get four other teams to the knockout stage, but sadly, not Ecuador. No matter what, his rapid pace and deadly finishing were enough to earn him his nickname Superman and a 15 million euro move to the Premier League. Despite Tener saying he struggled massively at first with after the English game, he started out his time at West Ham with a goal in his first ever league start and four goal contributions in three matches over October that nearly earned him the league's Player of the Month award. It was a more than promising start, in fact he looked like such a bargain that Chelsea were even considering signing the player that soon after he arrived. But then, a toe injury followed by a knee injury put him out for 45 days in total and his form fizzled away. By summer he was finally looking sharp again, getting two goals and two assists in four matches at the Copa America, but before he was even back at West Ham, a calf injury left him out for another three months. And once he made it back, he did not even play a full match before he was out with a back injury for another month. In January, thankfully he destroyed everything in his way, setting the league ablaze with six goal contributions in six matches, but I kid you not, it all ended with an ankle injury that lasted for another full month. He seemed like another great talent who unfortunately was made out of glass. By the end of the season he had not managed to play the full 90 again. May it be fitness or the coach realizing he couldn't depend on a player that was always injured, even with a goal or assist every 152 minutes, it was decided that the best move was to let go of him. But in a last act of desperation he was instead loaned out to Everton where they hoped somehow things could be different. Unfortunately, they weren't. In fact, the highlight of his year at Everton came when Valencia faked an injury in a World Cup qualifier against Chile so that he could escape the police who was waiting for him in the sidelines by riding away in the medical staff's golf cart. 
It is easily one of the funniest and strangest moments in the history of football. If you're wondering why the police were out to get him, well, apparently he owed his ex-wife 18,000 euros in alimony, though to be fair, eventually the charges were dropped. But I'll never get over the fact that the police thought the best moment to arrest him was during a World Cup qualifier. Regardless, by the end of the season, now already 28 years old, Valencia seemingly accepted his fate as a Premier League flop and went back to Mexico, where he was still remembered as a cult hero. Hey, sorry for interrupting the video, but this will be very quick. I don't know about you, but I never have my wallet on me, because I hate carrying all that bulkiness, but thankfully, Rich sent me one of their wallets and it's so thin. It's one of those things I always wanted but never got, and now that I have it, I can't believe I didn't get it sooner. The same thing goes for their keycase, it's so convenient. And now, if you want to help out the channel, you can get one yourself with the link rich.com slash ddof, and you can save up to 40% until December 22nd. That's rich.com ddof Now back to the video. This time around playing for Tigres, he opened his season with a hat-trick and from there on out, they treated him with extreme care, always resting him as much as possible, trying to avoid injuries at all costs, which in return allowed Valencia to finish the season with 17 goals and 3 assists, one every 139 minutes. As he made them Apertura champions, took them to the Clausura playoffs, being named the player of the year and above all, made them Los Campeones de Campeones. And if that wasn't enough, the next year Valencia took it all up a notch at the CONCACAF Champions League, opening the tournament with a hat-trick and then scoring four and assisting another throughout the quarters and semi-finals. By the time he got to play in the final, he had been involved in 62% of all goals scored by Tigres. It was a monstrous performance that was more than deserving of the title, but still, they ended up losing the final. However, he still got to bring home the golden boot with seven goals in eight matches, as well as an award for his placement in the team of the tournament. Among all of this, things were strangely hitting up again for the now 30-year-old with a second chance in Europe on the menu, but still, he decided to play one more season at Tigres to finish out his contract, and everything crumbled. His form suddenly died down, a few minor injuries resurfaced, and then the pandemic arrived. Suddenly, football transfers weren't necessarily the priority, and it was almost all for nothing. Had Valencia not gone all in, taking the major risk of refusing to renew his contract and becoming a free agent? This could have easily gone wrong, but among interest from Galatasaray, Valencia landed in Turkey, eventually signing for Fenerbahce instead. With shallow breath, the ones who knew of Valencia's talent awaited to see what he could do in Europe, now older, wiser and more determined than ever. But as always, that was exactly when disaster struck. On the 17th of August 2020, 15 armed men entered his family's home in Ecuador around 10 a.m., looking to kidnap his father. However, after struggling to find him, they began sorting through his family, deciding who to kidnap, wounding several of his relatives and taking his sister and her husband instead, though the husband managed to get away by throwing himself into a river. After days without any contact, a message arrived they were looking for a payment of 1.5 million pounds in return for the life of his sister. However, the van in which they got away was seen going into the Esmeraldas forest, which was then searched by the police with the kidnappers going further and further into the jungle as they tried to evade them, only for the victim to be found 10 days after, hiding under a plastic tarp completely uninjured. It would have been more than comprehensible if the stress and trauma that stemmed from these events had completely demoralized the air before the new season, but instead, it went on like nothing had happened, surprising everyone by how easily adapted to the new league. However, over those first few months, he was being played in the wing, and it was only towards the final stretch of the season, after being moved back to a striker role, that he absolutely popped off, finishing the season with 9 goal contributions in just 8 matches, ending up just 2 points short of clutching the league title, one more goal in the second to last game, and it could have been a comeback for the ages. Regardless, the following season he would open with 5 goals in 3 matches, even being the hero with a hat-trick in the Europa League playoffs, despite not being able to play the full 90 a single time. But of course, as always, the fairy tale couldn't last for too long, and from there on out, he was hit with five different injuries before the season was over, missing 16 matches in total, being on the sidelines for three whole months, and not able to stop Fenerbahce from finishing second again. Still, this was a teaching moment of sorts for Fenerbahce, who started the current season with a whole new approach towards Valencia, now rarely allowing him to play more than 60 minutes in a match, making sure they minimize the risk of injury and against what anyone could have possibly predicted, and Valencia hit his prime at 33 years of age. 
He started the year with three braces in his first three matches, then a red card versus Konya Spor for good measure. Coming back with two goals and one assist over the following three matches and then a hat-trick just two weeks later. All in all, by November, just four months into the season, Valencia is at 15 goals already as well as four assists, a tally he only managed to pass two different times across his entire career topping the league's goal-scoring charts with five more goals than anybody else, which, considering how little game time he's been afforded, means he's putting a goal contribution on the charts every 50 minutes. If you need a point of comparison, let's go for the big man himself, Erling Haaland who despite scoring 8 more goals than Valencia so far, needed 53 minutes of game time for each of his goal contributions. It was exactly after all of this that Ener Valencia arrived at the World Cup. As you can see, maybe it shouldn't have been as much of a surprise that he was capable of putting on a show. If not that, maybe his 52 goals and assists over 77 matches with Ecuador, won every 109 minutes with the national team's shirt, should have done the job. Regardless, Ener opened the tournament against Qatar with two goals as well as a third one that was disallowed over a very narrow offside. All before he was, in his classic manner, stretchered off the field with an injury. No matter what, he still made it back to the second match where he was once again the star, scoring to tie the match against the Netherlands before once again coming out injured. Meaning that all of the last six World Cup goals scored by Ecuador had all been scored by Valencia himself, something that had only ever happened in three other occasions. Eusebio in 66 for Portugal, Paolo Rossi in 82 for Italy, and Oleg Salenko in 94 for Russia. Three of the greatest performances in World Cup history. However, tragedy couldn't have left an side even after so many years, so rightfully, Ecuador were beaten by Senegal in the third match, ironically, after a poor clearance by Ener himself led to a goal. Once again, they finished the group stage with four points, and once again, those four points couldn't get them into the knockout stages, even though surely they will be enough for other teams. Regardless, the current top scorer of the World Cup is gone. We will never get to see an Air Valencia at the World Cup knockout stages, and one thing is sure, the World Cup deserves more Air Valencia, and Air Valencia deserves more from the World Cup.